final video for oceanic art, and we're moving to Micronesia. The Marshall Islands in eastern Micronesia consist of all of these coral atolls um, with over 1,000 islands and inlets um, over several hundred square miles. And so um, to make to trade and to maintain links between the islands, the islanders built seafaring canoes that were really quick and maneuverable. And they also developed an amazing system of navigation between the islands. This is not a simple matter because um, a lot of these islands are so low to the sea level that they can't be really they can't be seen from a great distance away. And so these charts marked not only the location of islands, but their knowledge of the swell and the wave patterns at, as well. And remember, there is a video on this topic for you to watch and take notes on for this module too. What we're looking at in these charts is they're a series of wooden sticks. Um, the horizontal and vertical sticks act as a support, while the diagonal and the curved sticks represent wave swells. And there are small shells. Here you can see one here, um, here, tiny shells, um, and the one on the left too, that represent the uh, position of islands. Now, what I find particularly amazing is that um, this information was memorized. These charts weren't carried with on voyages, but they were really kind of on land tools. The final work for this module is a huge, complex, um, again, part of Micronesia known as Nan Madol. And this was the political and ceremonial center for the ruling chiefs of the Sao Delur dynasty that ruled um, this area of Micronesia from 1100 to 1628. It's an entire complex of close to 100 artificial square islands spread across 200 acres. We're looking at the site here um, on the map on the bottom. So this is all artificial. And this area of 200 um, built islands housed up to 1,000 people. It was built from the 13th to the 17th centuries. And um, it is uh, different archaeologists again you know the question about how on earth how how do you build this and different archaeologists have guessed that the people of Ponpai moved an average of 1800 tons of basalt per year over four centuries to construct these artificial islands though nobody really has a clear theory about how they actually did this and they quarried stones from the opposite side of the um, natural island and transported it more than 25 miles to the submerged coral reefs that formed the, the uh, foundations of all of these artificial islands. And then they used different ropes and levers to stack them into interesting form uh, formations. Uh, what we're looking at two images of the site today um, that um, creates the, all of these raised platforms, dwellings, their ceremonial sites. And you'll notice here in the actual masonry, they're not using any mortar. There's no, you know, there's nothing um, sticky here to, um, to connect, but instead they're simply relying on positioning um, each basalt column and the weight to hold the structure in place. The human power required to do this um, is an impressive display of power by the rule, rulers of Ponpai. And um, there are oral histories of Nan Madal that describe, um, they um, have actually created mythologies about how this place was created, that there were giant birds that helped or magic of twin sorcerers. Um, this is, uh, these oral histories are passed down through many generations and 
um, is some of them co correlate with the archaeological evidence. In the West, we often um, discredit oral histories. We prefer written texts. But here, it's a really important source because oral histories describe a series of canals cut to allow eels to enter the city from the sea. And a well on one of the islands is said to have housed a secret eel, a sacred eel, sorry, who embodied a sea deity and to whom the um, um, the um, innards were fed um, to uh, to priests. And so, you know, if we look back at this map, um, the idea of eels being cultivated here makes sense because we have this really elaborate um, canal system that is set up um, that is set up to um, bring in to kind of flush the canals using the motion of the daily tides um, to make sure that there was um, fresh water being brought into these um, these tidal canals and waterways. Um, what we're looking at here is um, in, in the photographs and the reconstruction uh, drawing here on the left is um, what is some sort of um, religious or administrative center. A lot of times we um, there are some um, mortuaries, um, so some um, uh, there are some burials here, but it's also um, some of the actual uses and functions of some of these open plazas are unclear, but often the open plaza, as we see up here, has a wall um, around it, that dry masonry, no mortar, um, with a small building in the middle. And so the exact function is a little bit unclear. All right, that is the end of the new material for Art of the Pacific. And I will see you all on Teams very soon.